Hey everybody, it's Party Elite with another episode of Total Breakdown. This one was sent in by Ease as he leads the Beastmen to battle against Bucket Shop's dwarfs. The Beastmen come in with Morgar in charge, alongside two Gorbals, four units of Ungor spearmen, two units of Vestigor, a Razorgor chariot, a giant, and a Cygor. The Dwarves come in with Grumbrindal in charge, alongside two Runesmiths, three units of Longbeards, the Grumbling Guard, a unit of Slayers, the Dragonback Slayers, two units of Rangers, two units of Dwarf Warriors, ranked up to rank 1, and a Thane. Alright, as always, we're going to start with a conversation about layout, and it is pretty simple from both sides of the battlefield. With the Beastmen, we've got the Ungor Herd right up front, providing a solid line, and then just behind them, we have Morgur, the Giant, and the Two Gorbel, able to strengthen the center or move in and provide support elsewhere if necessary. Then, further behind, we have the two units of Bestigor Herd, again, able to respond wherever necessary, provide some of that sweet, sweet extra damage and armor piercing as well, of course. And then we've got the Cygor all the way at the back, tossing rocks, and to the right, we have the Razor Gore Chariot, which, if left unchecked, they can come in and cause a significant amount of damage and devastation. Meanwhile, the Dwarfs, who are actually playing aggressively compared to the typical Dwarf player, we have the uh, Longbeards down the center here, as well as the Grumbling Guard, creating a strong center. Then on either flank, we have the Dwarf Warriors, so a little bit weaker there, uh, but they are ranked up to rank 1, which will help their leadership and their uh, melee capabilities, of course. Then we do have the Thane buffing up the right flank, which is nice, and then we've got the Runesmith, Grimbrindal, and another Runesmith right back here, able to dive in and give melee support if necessary, as well as, of course, uh magical support through their runes. The rangers back here, very typical placement, you just want to be able to uh, open shots off would be a good idea, as I say quite often, to keep them separate so that if a Gorbel, for example, decides to pummel through uh, your front lines, you can keep them apart so one can keep firing when the other is occupied, and then at the back all the way, we've got the Slayers and the Dragonback Slayers again, able to respond to any flanking maneuvers, any rear offenses, whatever might be uh, coming towards them. So Slayers at the back, sort of a typical overall layout but it's nice to see an aggressive dwarf player as i said now as we start off you'll see both players are moving towards each other so a fair amount of aggression going on the cygor starting the aggression obviously from a distance with its first rock flying through the air uh targeting the grumbling guard and that is a good target not the best hit they're doing a little bit of damage which is nice but uh targeting the grumbling guard is a good idea because they are a high threat unit so you want to shut them down nice and early so good to get those shots off and you'll see the razor gore chariot sent up here and uh, stationary for a second there, and the thing here is, you'll notice the Dwarf player does simply not respond. The Cygor continues to throw its rocks, these guys continue to move wrong uh, arrow there, but continue to move downwards, and these guys continue to move this way, and really there was no adjusting to this uh, very obvious aggression, this very obvious uh, threat. Uh, the entire formation should have stopped in place because, again, the Dwarf Warriors, for example, they do have charge def defense against large, as do, of course, the Longbeards. So it would have been great to halt, halt and hold position and actually send these Slayers over here to provide some support and keep the Dragonback Slayers in the center because, of course, you've got the Giant and the Gorbel coming in and uh, you want to get that damage in there and the... the I mean, that's obviously just a good call. So, really some uh, some poor management there from the Dwarf, and it would have been nice to see both Runesmiths drop a Wrath of, or a, a Rune of Wrath and Ruin on uh, on the Razor Gore Chariot or on the Giant ASAP, because you want to have that focused damage. Uh, having the two Runes active at the same time is a great move, and you'll notice these two Rangers open fire towards the Gorbel. That is the traditional high threat unit, so that's the target right now, but really, in reality, in this composition, it is this Chariot, and you can see these Dwarf Warriors are counter-charging, and they will get served horribly for doing so. They should have halted, they should have stood still, but instead they decided to counter-charge, and so they are being flung about by this Chariot. So, great move there by uh, uh, by Ease and his and his chariot. Poor move there by the dwarf player, unfortunately. So you'll see that chariot comes through and pulls away right away. Doesn't waste any time to get away. And over here, the slayers te temporarily temporarily being sent there to do the right thing, but instead being reassigned because the Gorbel are coming in as the lines do meet. Very high threat, yes. You're afraid of the Gorbel, you're afraid of the Giant, but leaving the Chariot free as it's been done here is a terrible move because just like the Gorbel can it completely wreck troops just as they're doing right now, the Chariot can do the same. So again, the Rangers just focusing down on the Giant and the Gorbels trying to get some damage in there. You'll notice over here as well in terms of the motions that the uh, Beastmen are making, it's overall to spread that damage. You've got the Bestigor over here helping the Ungor Spearmen uh, hold that line, or, or rather uh, 
sort of push through that line, and these Bestigor herd pushing into the center to help support the, the giant, and, well, the Gorbel have pushed through. Uh, really, those Bestigor could have actually been sent here to try finishing this side off quickly as well, because we do have a Runesmith in there as well as, uh, or sorry, we do have the uh, Longbeards as well as the Runesmith up there. These Dwarf Warriors are up here, so it would have been great to get the uh, the other unit of Bestigor herd in there. Now, you'll see all this ranged fire coming in and trying to shut down, it looks like the Gorbel now, um, and meanwhile the Saigor still throwing rocks in from a distance. It would have been a great idea to actually send the Saigor in, basically adding another giant into the fray, because most of this situation will be handled in melee. There aren't that many ranged troops, there aren't that many uh, reserve troops that can be targeted, so... Uh would have been a great idea to actually bring the Saigor in, throw a rock, walk a little, throw a rock, walk a little, and next thing you know, the front has collapsed. Now over here, the chariot once again sort of coming in from the side, pushing through all of these range units, shutting them down without any issue. And again, that's why the chariot really needs to be shut down. You'll see how much damage that, that one charge did. Extremely dangerous. And then of course, the Saigor throwing its rocks as well, causing some morale damage here and there. And you'll notice a Rune of Wrath and Ruin does go down, causing some damage to these Ungor Spearmen. Not the best target. That will They will be easily taken care of through simple melee anyway, so not the best target. And over here, the chariots once again being pushed through these dwarf warriors, causing a significant amount of damage. You'll see just how much work they do. And we do have apocalyptic vision going down, just providing that extra melee attack, making sure the front lines of the dwarfs are collapsing readily. And you'll see the chariot basically has done a full circle. It came in from here, went out a little bit, pushed in through these range units, and then it came down to this flank over here and caused a significant amount of damage. Now, over here, the Ungor Spearmen are giving up, and again, that is why the best score would have been better served off to this side over here. Uh, you'll notice also the Gorbel are having a hard time because we do have both units of Slayers in there against that one Gorbel and all that ranged fire coming in as well. So, ultimately, yes, good job shutting down one of those Gorbel, more or less, but uh, it could have been just one of, these, uh, one of these Slayers in there and the other one taking care of the Chariot. Now, we do have Rune of Oath and Steel going down, buffing up the armor, trying to prevent the of damage being absorbed here and you'll see the chariot now charging through these long beards again just tossing them around because they aren't stationary they're moving around and they become an easy target not as much damage on that hit there but that's not a problem uh chariot still freely able to get out of there and meanwhile these range units still firing into the gorbel trying to shut that down not paying any attention to this chariot that chariot has taken next to no damage and uh, and that's really telling it it really shows where the mentality of the dwarf player was not considering the uh, chariot a threat now in the meanwhile we've got this spearman herd here all the way at back there not being brought back in and this gorbel has been shut down and on his way out he's given up scared damaged um you know sort of going off to lick his wounds but we do have one gorbel in there still at three quarter health more or less the chariot does come in once again slamming these uh, slayers from the rear doing a lot of damage chaos spawn coming in as well uh, to cause a lot of hurt there and you'll notice a unit there shattered and died almost instantaneously we do have the rune of negation going down on this right flank here trying to keep these guys alive taking in less damage but of course when there's so much coming in 22 percent only counts for so much this gorbel now back into the fight should have been pulled in here to just destroy these dwarf warriors and then back into the fray but uh, a little forgotten here because probably micromanaging the chariot but it seems like the chariot has gotten stuck in taking a lot of damage and that's the thing a chariot can be shut down very quickly and if the dwarf player had just focused on the chariot early on this chariot would have died uh maybe 30 kills ago so you really want to focus on the easily destroyed high threat unit before you focus on the uh difficult to destroy high threat unit the gorbel is still not off the field so really, if the dwarf player had focused fire, had focused fired onto the razor cha razor gore chariot, and had a unit of slayers bogging it down, holding it in place, and then you know cutting down these uh, these razor gore, uh, the the chariot would have been shut down a long time ago. And that's very telling when you can see how much damage it takes in one hit. And again, the razor gore chariot just able to dive through these rangers, not a problem at all. And the rangers still preoccupied with the giant. It looks like trying to shut it down. And yes, again, high threat unit, but uh, not as much as this chariot. And you'll see these guys are starting to break and falter. They don't want to stay here. They don't want to be thrown around like they are being uh, and the gorbel again just a bit of mismanagement they're not the end of the world but it could have been brought back just to bring a quicker end to this battle and over here you'll see one uh, i guess it's a misclick or a mistake here the razor gore cherry being sent in to charge where the giant is standing and so they aren't actually able to get uh, through obviously because the giant stops them you can also see this unit of longbeards not doing anything not getting involved in the fighting they should have been sent in uh you know to cause some damage or or to maybe chase after these guys and make sure they shatter potentially cause a mass route but instead they're they're just standing there and in fact the razor gore chariot should have targeted these guys because had it targeted uh this unit of longbeards they would have taken a lot of damage and possibly uh, you know started faltering a little bit 
Now, back to full speed here, so you'll see everything is going sideways for the dwarves. They're not uh, they're not able to hold their ground. Another uh, Rune of Wrath and Ruin goes down, but unfortunately, it's not doing all the work it could be doing. It is helping shut down these Bestigor, but with the Chariot still free, uh, that unit of Bestigor is not going to make the biggest difference. And of course, Morgur as well, heavy on the damage output, is going in there against uh, Grumbrindal. At this stage of the game, Morgur is more or less at full health, and he's fighting against Grumbrindal, who's almost dead already, and the Thane... But almost at uh, at 50% health, so really, uh, not really war taking care of Morgur early enough. But it all really came down to that chariot, which is still alive, still three chariots roaming around, causing a significant amount of damage. There go the Rangers. That's the end of them. And you'll see these guys are being sent back in. But honestly starting to feel a little unnecessary. These Slayers, obviously, they will fight to the death, which is unfortunate. They do need to be finished off, but a couple of shots from the Saigor will do just that. And again, if the Saigor had been sent in to engage in melee, uh, this w battle would have been over quite a while ago. And you'll see the Razorgore Chariots come in for another charge. And at this point, they're at 103 kills. Not a problem at all for them. They're having a great time, having an absolute field day. And the two Gorbul are kind of forgotten, but here you go. Sort of a control A and then a double right click, I'm guessing, on a single unit. Probably the Thane or Grumbrindal. And everybody comes charging in. Looks like it was the Thane. So everybody comes charging in. The Saigor killing a couple of his own, uh, but they don't really care about Ungor, so what, uh, what difference does it make? And there you go. The two Chariots again, three of them still alive, going back to just shut down the ranged fire that's coming in, uh, making sure that those guys stay completely irrelevant. They have done barely any work. Three kills and eight kills from ranged units. That's absolutely atrocious. And there you have it. The Gorb will come in, the Chaos Spawn over here getting some work done. Longbeards do not stand a chance. The Slayers are also more or less taking care of the Dragonback Slayers as well, falling apart. Well, you can guess how this is about to end. The Dwarfs just did not manage to hold themselves together, and ultimately, by not paying attention to all the high threat units uh, in equal amounts, by putting too much weight on the uh, the Gorbul and the Giant, the Chariot was left completely unattended and able to do whatever the hell it wanted to. And you'll see right up until the very end, the Chariot still has three models. It is still all there, and that last unit of Chaos Spawn come in just to cap off the enemy. These guys are all shattered, they're all giving up, and that is the end outside of these Dragonback Slayers. Uh, who are just about to die out, that is, uh, that spells victory for the Beastmen. So, overall, a pretty, uh, solid battle, I would say. Um, it really boiled down, though, as I said countless times, to the inability of the Dwarfs to prioritize the right targets. The Chariot was just given free reign. 150 kills off a Chariot is insanity, and, uh, it really took full advantage of that opportunity, as you can see. So, there were a lot of, yes, threatening units in the enemy army. They've got anti-infantry everywhere. There were large units that were, you know, that have got area of attack or area of effect attacks. But the chariot was more or less never bogged down. And as a result, it was used to great effect. As always, make sure you subscribe to this channel for more Total War content and keep sending in your battle replays. Said it many times, I think it's one of the best ways to learn and it's always great to see battles from the community. Thank you guys very much for watching and I'll see you on the battlefield.